Well, hello, fellow crafters and fellow artists. Janine here with another part of our watercolor series. And today we are going to be talking about brushes and brush strokes because, you know, when you talk about the basics in painting, you have paint, you have something to paint on. So in watercolor, it's watercolor paper. In acrylics and oils, it could be just about anything, but most typically canvas, you know, um, but you could have journals that you're painting in and, and so forth and so on. So that's one of the basic elements is what to paint on, but what are you going to paint with? So brushes. So let's talk about brushes today. In watercolor, uh, you have some basic brushes. And from what I understand, if you only have a handful of these basics, then you can paint just about anything because even a very large round brush like this one, this is a number 30, this one's very large, but because the round brush has come to a fine point, you can get in and get fine detail with it. So you can actually paint an entire painting with this one brush. So that's going to lead us into our first type of brush. And we're also going to be looking at brush strokes. So not only what does, what does this brush look like, what's it called, but how does it act? What does it do? So in rounds, rounds come from very, very tiny. So you can see that is a round. That's a number two round next to a number 30 round. And in every size in between and even some larger than the number 30. So rounds come in a great variety of sizes. This one here is a number eight. And they're great, again, for all-purpose painting. Of course, you could take a little brush like this and you could get very, very very minute detail with it. Um, so if you're doing something that has little bitty details in it, then you could do that with this brush. But if you're wanting to get big washes of color at one time, this would be a good brush for that. This number 30. But again, you can get some fine detail with this brush. Again, it's not going to be as fine as, say, this brush. But you're still going to be able to get some fine details with this because of the point of the brush. So that's what round brushes look like, and these are from the uh, Mimic Squirrel set that I bought from Jerry's Artorama. And something kind of similar to those brushes is a liner brush or a rigger brush. They are basically the same brush but called by different names, but they have long, uh, slightly tapered, very thin bristles. So there's not as there's not going to be nearly as many bristles in your liner or rigger brushes as there are in your uh, round brushes. See how many, how much thicker around the ferrule and the, the reservoir is. And this is, I guess let's go over the brush basics. So of course you have the handle, which is the part you hold. The ferrule is this metal part here that holds the handle and the bristles together. And of course these are the bristles. This part of the bristles is the reservoir. This is what holds water and paint. And this, the tip, is where you paint from. So, you can see on these two brushes that the ferrule is much bigger around and the reservoir is much bigger around. So that's liners or riggers. Then you have angle brushes, which are very, well, act very much like a flat brush. And so this is the only angle brush I have. Uh, I don't use it that often because honestly I do find that a flat brush works for the most part just as well. And then we have the flats and these are all considered flat brushes but you can see how very different they look. This flat brush from Mimic Squirrel has much longer bristles than this flat brush which has shorter bristles and then this one at this point here in the ferrule is much thinner and this one is thicker and the reservoir between the two of them, the one, this one here is thicker and this one here is much thinner. So you can see even between brands there can be a big variety of differences. So I'm going to be able to get a much finer, I'm sorry, much finer straighter line with this flat brush because these bristles are thinner and when wet come to an even more precision edge than this brush, but this brush here I like for laying in a lot of water and a lot of color at one time. And this one here by Daler and Rowney, I'm sorry, this is a Tom Jones one inch flat, this is a Mimic Squirrel three quarter inch flat, and this is a Daler and Rowney three quarter inch flat. And look at the difference. So basically the same 
labeled as the same brush but are very very different to me this is more of a mop brush it has a rounded head here and the bristles splay out they 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 spray they splay open more whereas when this and when they're wet they will come to um they will come together but they can be very easily splayed out and they're good for like dotting in kind of some texture whereas this one would be really good again either any of them for laying down a lot of water and color quickly but this one you can get kind of a precise line with but this one uh, if it's not overly wet and has some pigment in it can get um, you know some dotted texture so that is the flats and then you have fan brushes now this isn't the best fan brush in the world but it is the only one I own fan brushes uh, are really great for getting in like grassy grassy textures anything where you want some some thin but multiple lines of color at a lot at one time fan brush is going to be your way to go for that it's going to make very quick and easy work of that sort of painting and then you have your wash brushes this is a two inch wash and you want to talk about lay down a lot of color in a very short period of time that's what a flat wash brush is going to do you're going to be able to get a large sheet of paper very wet and very full of pigment very quickly with a flat wash brush this size so let's go ahead and get some of these brushes wet and take a look at brush strokes and what they do so let's take a look at this number 30 round and I'm going to work with some bright colors so that you guys can see really well. So this is a dioxazine violet. And so as I was telling you, this is the reservoir. So you can see as I'm tapping that on my, br on my paper towel, I'm getting color because it is in this area of the brush is going to hold color and moisture. And so we can go in and do a very fine line with the tip of this brush, but then we can splay it out and get a very thick line, and we can vary it by less pressure and greater pressure as we move it. You can hold it to its side a little bit and get about a medium line. Again, splay it out, pull it up, and make a petal or a leaf. Like so. You can do a comma stroke with it. C strokes. There's a lot of things that you can do with a round brush and then you can just basically lay in a lot of color very quickly with a very large round brush. Now of course a smaller round brush you're going to get finer details. So let's take a look at this number eight. And I'm going to get a little ultramarine blue. So now you're going to see you're going to get almost the same thin line that you achieved with the number 30. Maybe a little bit thinner, but if we wanted to do, say, a smaller petal, of course you're going to accomplish that with a smaller brush. So if you want it thicker, you press down. If you want it thinner, you pull up. And you can get an air, a large area wet. These mimic squirrels really hold a lot of pigment and a lot of moisture. So they go a long way without having to reload. And we can just stamp a shape like that with them. And that's kind of petal like. That one's a little more rounded if you don't splay the pit the bristles out as much. 
And then if you want to, let me clean the reservoir off a little bit, you can spread the bristles out and make it sort of like a fan brush where you can get that sort of small line texture. So that's rounds. Now let's take a quick look at this angle brush. So there you see you get a nice straight line with it, either very thick or very thin, and you can make it very straight. Great for saying putting in a fence line, a roof line, the edge of a building. Again, you can vary the pressure and get a receding line. If you already got a straight line of uh, architecture or something of that nature and you want to put in some color next to it very precisely, you can do that. Again, this is a lot of, you can do a lot of this with a flat brush also because it's just an angled flat brush. And let's say you wanted to do, I guess, I'm, I'm trying to think if this would be a good calligraphy sort of brush, but that might not If you twist it as you pull it up, you can get some different and interesting shapes with it. Kind of some comma stroke shapes. Nice wave pattern there. So that's what some different brush strokes with a angle brush looks like. Let me show you uh, this brush. Uh, they say this is called a three-quarter inch flat by Daler and Rowney, but to me it really looks more like a mop brush. So again, you could just lay down a really thick amount of color at one time, or as I was discussing, you can get some pigment loaded into the brush, have it, the brush fairly dry, and get some pigment loaded into it, and get some really interesting texture out of this brush because the way the the bristles kind of splay out when the brush is not very wet. This is a really, really thirsty brush, so it flat goes through some paint and moisture quickly. Now we can get some straight lines with it, but this particular brush, because like I said, to me it really resembles more of a mop brush, is not as good for getting really straight, precise lines. Now let's take a look at a more precision flat. And I'm going to get a little Prussian blue. I haven't played a lot with Prussian blue yet. I have not given that color a lot of love on my palette. So look at that. Look at that. You get a razor thin, sharp line with that fat, flat brush. This is, again, a three quarter inch flat by Mimic Squirrel but then we can turn it this way and get a really thick straight wash of color. And again, as in every case, you can vary the pressure, the way you hold the brush, 
lighten, press down, press less, and really get some interesting shapes like so. So again, that's some examples of different shapes and sizes that you can get from very, very thin to very, very thick with a flat brush. And since watercolor has a tendency to be really loose, I don't think you're going to use a, a rigger or a liner very often, except maybe if you're putting in grasses, hair, you really want to get a lot of, I mean, you might want to outline something that might be appropriate for a particular painting that you're doing. I'm sorry, you're not seeing any of that. How about that? Now you can see it. So this is a number two liner brush. And again, depending on how much pigment you have loaded on it, how moist it is, is going to make it a big difference. How much pressure you use, like that is the, the lightest amount of pressure and that produces a, a hair fine line. But if I was to press harder, I would get a much thicker line. These would definitely be good as an artist for signing your work. If I wanted to outline something I'd painted if that was appropriate. Of course, I'm not very good at that, but you know, if it was appropriate to outline something, this would be a good brush for that. I say getting in a lot of hair or grassy texture. Small skinny branches on a tree. I don't know, when I'm trying to like do handwriting, I feel better holding it closer on the, you know, down on the ferrule. It's a good thing to do practices like this so that you get the feel for your brushes and how you're comfortable holding them, how light a pressure you want to use, how much pigment and moisture you want loaded on them or how dry you want them to get the different effects you're looking for. So here you can see the brush is getting drier and so the effect is much different. It's much more textural with a drier brush. Let me get another piece of paper. <laughs> Just practicing, you can go through pages of this. So I, I suggest you don't use your most expensive watercolor paper for these exercises because you can go through loads of papers very, very quickly. Just practicing all these different brush strokes and getting a feel for your brushes and what they're capable of. So let's grab a little Payne's Gray. That's a fun and interesting color. I like playing with it. That's great for putting in foggy uh, backgrounds or um, adding some uh, shadowing. So here's a fan brush. And you see you get lots of... Now this is a stiffer fan brush. This isn't exactly a watercolor fan brush, but it was the only one I had 
for this illustration but you see how you can get that grassy background with it but you could also kind of mimic a a, a plaid with that brush could you see any of that oh that paint's gray is awfully light let me um switch to a brighter color You see, you can get like a very tweedy, very textural. This can mimic clothing. Again, you could do it very lightly, get grassy textures. Very interesting little brush. So that leaves us with one brush and that is the wash brush and I want to get a clean sheet of paper for that. Because I want to show you what is so fun if you're doing a large painting, say a sunset painting, you can, of course my water is now just a little bit dirty so this isn't going to be the cleanest wash in the world. but. If you want to get a really quick wet and wet wash of a sunset on a large piece of paper, you can do that with such ease with a big flat wash brush like this. So you see I just got this whole piece of paper wet really quickly and I want to make sure it's good and evenly wet. Okay, I'm just going to kind of eyeball a, um, a horizon line, say about right, right here. I don't have that nearly wet enough, let me. And so we're just going to put in a really quick sunset. don't have a nearly big enough clean container of water for this brush. That's the thing though, when you use a flat wash you need a wide open mouth container for rinsing it. I'm getting a lot of water drips in there. This was not the best place to do this example, but let me get some ultramarine blue. And there you can put in a quick sunset just like that with a big flat wash brush like this and hopefully not make as giant of a mess as I did. <laughs> and let's say this was a sunset over water. Well then you would want to mirror whatever you did on the top. You would want to do a mirror image of it in most cases on the bottom. be a little strong. Pick some of that up.
Of course, you would be want to want to be much neater and precise than I'm being. I'm just wanting to show you an example of what you can do with a big flat brush wash brush like this. The sides make a giant mess. You could put in a sunset sky and its reflection over water quickly and easily. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for now because I think I've babbled on quite long enough. Uh, get out there, get some brushes, and just go to town. You know, don't use your most expensive paper doing this. Use some student paper to do this and just practice with your brushes and the strokes and the different things that they can do. Practice the different techniques and just play and have fun because that's what art is all about. It's, all, it's about making beauty, but it's also about making enjoyable time for yourself that you get to spend doing something you truly enjoy doing. Anyway, I appreciate you guys tuning in for another watercolor video and I, it just blesses my life that y'all are enjoying these that I'm getting some positive feedback about it so thanks so much and if you haven't yet um, you're gonna see right about here is my picture and if you will click on that it will take you to my home page where you can subscribe to my channel so that you never miss a video and I would appreciate it if you would do that and also give me a thumbs up on this video let me know that you're enjoying the watercolor series and remember to um, leave some comments below. Give me some hints about some other videos that you might like to see in the future, uh, whether it be watercolor card making or other types of crafts. Let me know what you guys would like to see in future videos. And as always, you guys have a very blessed day. Bye now.